My next guest, Sarah K. Ellis, became president and CEO of GLAAD in 2014 after a successful career as a media executive. GLAAD is the world's largest LGBTQ media advocacy organization. Welcome, Sarah Kate. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, thanks. Happy Women's History Month, Sarah Kate. It's great to uh, have you here with us for today. Thank you for having me. Glad to celebrate and put <laughs> yes, a spotlight yes. on women. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I heard you at the World Economic Forum's Global Gender um, Gap Report, and uh, excuse me, sorry, um, you were at Davos, excuse me, at this year's World Economic Council, and you said that inclusion is not a buzzword, but a fundamental value. Um, what, how do you think companies can, you know, sit here and, you know, in, in working to include more people from the LGBTQ population, how can they better use inclusion and in making it a fundamental value? Um, yeah, I think this is a really, really important point. I think it's a point that's under fire right now, um, especially being politicized in this country. But we've seen it time and time again. If you care about your bottom line, then you absolutely need to care about diversity and inclusion because it leads to bottom line growth and top line growth, honestly. And so, you know, when you look at inclusion and you look at it through the spectrum of all marginalized communities, I mean, there's so many of us who don't have a seat at the table, right? Um, and the table is largely controlled by a small group of people who have had control for years and years and decades and centuries, actually. And when you do bring new thought, um, innovation happens at those tables and growth happens as a result of them. And I, I think for you know women, for LGBTQ folks, for people of color, um, I think what we're looking for is to be contributors and participants in this global economy and in the economy here in the United States. Right, right. And, you know, speaking of representation, I know that GLAAD recently re released its Where We Are on TV report, and the number of LGBTQ characters actually dropped from last year. It's now 596 to 637. You know, some people looking at that report might say, well, it's just, you know, roughly, um, you know, 100 characters down. But, you know, we know that representation is obviously very important. And if you're an LGBTQ viewer, that's um, essential for you. I would love to hear what it means, um, you know, as a part of the LGBTQ community for members of these communities to see themselves on TV and what that means in terms of inclusion. Yeah, um, you know, what we see on TV influences and impacts how we vote at the polls, what happens on school boards, what happens in churches what happens in community centers, it has an outsized influence on our culture. And so to see the number of characters of LGBTQ folks drop at a time when we're seeing an onslaught of over 400 anti-LGBTQ bills proposed at legislation, you can see from my seat and where I sit and what I do on a daily basis, I see a correlation here. Um, we are a community who has largely been invisible except for the past, you know, decade or two. And so our visibility is paramount for us being treated fairly, equally and living in society safely. And so one of the main ways to have that visibility is through storytelling. If you look specifically at the trans community, transgender women, what we're seeing is that, you know, if you ask people, do you know someone who's gay in America? 90% of Americans will say they know someone who's gay. If you ask if you know someone who's transgender, that number significantly drops to 13 to 16%. And so the way people are understanding who trans folks are in America is through media, is through storytelling. And what's happening right now is because there is a gap the politicians are filling that gap with misinformation and lies about the community. 
Yeah, and we are seeing this happening in the Republican presidential uh, primary, for example. My colleague Brooke Migdon and I have a piece out today about how this rhetoric is really transpiring in that primary. And then we know earlier this week, Arkansas Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders signed in a law that would ban transgender people from using the restroom that corresponds with their um, own gender. And we know that last week, Wyoming governor, uh, the Wy governor of Wyoming signed a legislation barring trans women from competing in women and girls sports. And, you know, there's been this increasingly negative rhetoric and these, um, you know, policies that would negatively impact the trans community as a whole. But we've seen a lot um, being said about trans women and seeing these policies that would negatively impact trans women in particular. Um, you know, what is being done in the LGBTQ space to advocacy space to push back against this? Because, you know, there's likely um, there, there's someone, whoever it is, the Republican nominee for president is going to be talking about this issue from that very high platform. Yeah. So from an LGBTQ advocacy standpoint, the movement itself is all banned together around this issue because we do exactly what you just said. See this being at the center point of this upcoming presidential uh, race. And we, you know, what happens, especially with Republican politicians, is that they look for a wedge issue, they look how they can stoke fear, and then they ride that wave until it works against them. And then they leave it. Remember critical race theory? Um, it, it was a, a big discussion point until they really lost at the midterm elections. And then it kind of died down, except for, I guess, DeSantis. Um, but other than that, I think that what we're doing is getting out there to educate the American people. Because like I said, 16% of Americans say they know someone who's trans. So it's our job to let Americans know who trans folks are. And I think that's very telling in and of itself. Why all these laws to ban people that only 16% of Americans know? I mean, it's so disproportionate and outsized. Um, and there is there is no issue here. This is being made into an issue. Trans folks have always existed. There's been a little bit more uh, media attention around them in, in terms of storytelling, definitely not enough. Um, and so now politicians have harped on that. And we are really doing education campaigns so that people get to know trans community members, people get to know parents of trans kids and what it's like. This is this is a, um, a very marginalized community. And this just puts a target on their back and makes it very unsafe for them. Uh, I want to move on to a Harvard Medical School report that was released last month that found that lesbian, gay, and bisexual individuals have more health um, issues and less, less access to proper health care than, um, you know, cisgender people, and they're at greater risk of suicide, cardiovascular issues, different kinds of cancers. Um, why are we seeing this? Does this have to do with, um, you know, discrimination in health care or a lack of access to health Healthcare um, among members of these communities? Yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> um, it is discrimination, part of that. It's all systemic, right? That when you are part of a marginalized community, you have less access. You have less access to financial, economic well being, which gives you less access to good medical help, which gives you less access or more access to being discriminated against where you can get medical help. And I also think because our community has felt um, shame for who they are, or made to feel shameful for who they are, we have higher stress levels. Um, and that leads to obviously higher um, contemplation of suicide, suicide rates, and poor um, behavior around our health because we don't value ourselves as much as we should. Sarah Kate, before I let you go, if there are any young LGBTQ women or young L LGBTQ people watching in general, what's one piece of advice you could give them today? Um, I think that even though it's very, very hard right now in the climate and the culture that we are living in, that the American people are for equality, they're for acceptance. And we, I hope you 
hold on and join the fight and join our movement and take good care of yourself. Well, Sarah Kate, that's a wonderful message. Thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with us and happy Women's History Month. Thank you.